This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famer Mike Van Deese joining us here at Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weight. They don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course and at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, our guest here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker. Deal or no deal. The Jason Walker Show. Hey, what up? Happy Tuesday. The Jason Walker Show. We are back. I'll explain why we were uh, <laughs> two weeks. Oh, love it. Uh, but we'll talk about that. We're also going to check in with football playoffs. Clint Lang from the Jefferson High Panthers will join us. Kyle Mihelish, Capital Football Coach, will join us as well. Uh, on the State in History, your auto contest performance of the week, and much more coming up on a show that you can uh, go to jasonwalkershow.com or Twitter handle at jwalkersports or email jason at jasonwalkershow.com and... Uh, You can check us out on Facebook as well. Opening uh, segment, we like to call it the walk-up, and it is brought to you by Montana Custom Log Homes, the premier log home company in the industry with three distinct divisions so you can create the log home of your dreams and your budget. Check them out. Milled, handcrafted, and timber frame. And all three are fantastic. They'll treat you like family. Yourcustomlog.com, Montana Custom Log Homes. All right. So we'll run through football brackets coming up and uh, our auto contest performance of the week. But uh, So here's why, here's why we were off for two weeks. It was not our fault. Well, we did take a week because we spent a week in Great Falls. Uh, had nine events in four days two weeks ago. That was a lot of fun. But uh, last week, we were all set, ready to go, come back on, and all of a sudden, uh, YouTube said, nope, sorry. Now, YouTube is where we upload our shows to then put onto our websites and our Facebook and our Twitter and everything else. Well, we're going to have to find something else because YouTube suspended us for now over a week. Uh, but checked earlier today, we should be able to get going again. So that's why we're back. And it was for something they said of misinformation or whatever, fact-checking. From something in 2020, like August of 2020. We hadn't even gotten to the election of 2020 yet. But YouTube, being the big tech parentals, decided something we did in August two years ago was not quite up to their standards. So we got to find a uh, we got to find a new streaming (laughs) partner other than uh, the YouTube. It's a joke that free speech, you know, is censored or whatever you want to call it. Um, An absolute just joke. So hopefully, hopefully things go well and uh, that gets changed. I mean, we literally have, and this was, I appealed. I appealed the decision by YouTube, and and I said, I literally have the First Amendment behind me. And they responded with, you're still suspended. So, um, it says right in the First Amendment, um, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press which we kind of are media of the right uh, or the right of the people to peacefully assemble and to petition the government with a redress of grievances. That means I can say what I want, but big tech says, no, no, you can't. You hurt our feelings. So we'll find a new streaming partner, but for now still on that, that, that one. (laughs) Uh, Hey, they're getting publicity, right? Okay. 
Make sure you check out Montana Custom Log Homes. They are veteran-owned, family-owned, woman-owned and operated, and they will take care of you and treat you like family if you trust them. And I do. They've got the best craftsmen in the state of Montana, perhaps in the Northwest. They will travel. They will finish your project. They are veteran-owned, family-owned, woman-owned and operated, as I said. You can check them out on your own. You can go in with your full uh, floor plans or use one of theirs. And they have over 15 different floor plans to create the log home of your dreams and your budget. So check out Montana Custom Log Homes at yourcustomlog.com. Uh, football playoffs now entering semifinal action. And this was the big thing that, that uh, YouTube took away from us for a week was being able to talk about the quarters last week. Uh, but semifinal action this week, going to be some good ones is in, in all across the state. The double A, you got Bozeman, you got Gallatin. Uh, talk to Alex Eshelman, who we will talk to again this week. But uh, she said, Le- Levi Weshi, the head coach at Bozeman, absolutely loves this show. So thanks, coach. We appreciate you watching this show. And being a Hawk, it's kind of it's, it's tough to root against the Hawks. So I'm not going to. Um, but I am, uh, I am a fan of the Raptors, though, too. I really like what they've done in just a few short years down there in the Gallatin Valley. But, yeah, Bozeman, Gallatin, Crosstown rivalry for a berth in the state championship in AA. That's Friday night at 7 o'clock, Van Winkle Stadium. Also Friday night, 7 o'clock at Vigilante, you'll have Capital, unbeaten on the year, taking on the two-time defending champs, Sentinel, who lost a couple times this year, but did paste CMR and squeak past West a yet again. What is that, the fifth time in two years that they've beaten West have the Spartans? Man, unbelievable. So those are two great semifinals in AA. In Class A this week, still really good. Hamilton, Billing Central, Lewistown, Polson. Expect some points to be put on the board in those two games. Class B, we'll talk to uh, Jefferson coach Clint Lang coming up. But you've got Loyola at Big Fork and also Jefferson traveling to Florence Carlton. That's going to be a fun one. A repeat a rematch of last year's state semis in Class B. In eight-man, or as they like to say, eight-person, it's eight-man football in the state of Montana. You've got Belt and Culbertson, and then Fairview and St. Ignatius on Saturday. I'm telling you, man, this is a great, great week of Montana high school football semifinals. And then in uh, six-man Freud Lake, they've won a couple in a row, and they're taking on Broadview Levina. And then Bridger will play Big Sandy. So you've got some heavyweights in six-man as well. Good, good stuff. No question about that. We are entering uh, postseason for Frontier Conference Volleyball. That's uh, Friday and Saturday at Montana Tech. And uh, I think I'll be down there Friday for the Providence match. They play MSU Northern. Uh, Let's see, Carroll's going to play Western. And then uh, Tech, winners of the regular season in the Frontier, and Rocky have buys into Friday afternoon. So it'll be really fun in uh, the frontier. Providence has won four straight tournament titles, but they are 2-8 and eight as they head in to conference tournament action. Tech was so good this year. Rocky, really good this year, too. So expect those two potentially to play. And speaking of volleyball, your auto concepts performance of the week. And I still haven't, but I'm going to get my bumper guard from auto concepts Perhaps this week ordered because uh, the roads are starting to get uh, get fun. Um, but congratulations to our auto contest performance of the week. Her name is Kira Thompson from Montana, St- uh, Montana State, the junior outside hitter. Was also named the Game Changer American Volleyball Coach Association National Player of the Week after the Cats got wins over Sac State, Portland State, Parker, Colorado native, is the first in Bobcat history to earn the National Player of the Week honor in volleyball. Uh, Clearly the Big Sky Offensive Player of the Week. She averaged six kills per set to lead the Cats in their wins over the league's number one and number four teams. Now, the Grizz volleyball team also beat Portland State. 
the number one team. Uh, let's see. But against Portland State on Saturday, Kira Thompson, career-high 32 kills, hit 444 and had 20 digs. She had a 30-20 night. You don't see that very often. Even in a five-setter, which this was. She had 22 kills, nine digs, hit 354 uh, against Sac State last Thursday. So Kira Thompson from Montana State Volleyball is our auto concepts performance of the week. Now, look, I could have given it to Capital. Their defense, their offense had over 300 yards. We could have gone with... Um, Tommy Malott, the play he made with Taco Dowler, which we're going to talk to Kyle Mahelish about coming up. But uh, Kira Thompson, ladies don't get enough of the love, and uh, she deserves it. Montana State Volleyball, National Volleyball Player of the Week, Kira Thompson, MSU. Uh, let's see here. Let me take a break. Have, have We've had a sick one the last couple of days, so been home with her. Uh, that's why I've got the glasses on tonight as well. It's been been a rough couple of days. She, it's not anything, you know, super cold wise, but it is a cold change of the weather. You've got, you know, Halloween, which was fun. She was a vampire skeleton fruit bat or skeleton vampire fruit bat. So cute. And having the, uh, the son home at least for another week till he ships off. He's been on leave, uh, since October. So he got the trick or treat with his little sister. That was cool last week. Um, and handing out candy at the door as well. So it was a good, good time. Um, oh, speaking of good times, and I'm not just saying this because I work now for the University of Providence on the, the, uh, the side. Well, <laughs> anyway, if you were into wrestling, there's a big wrestling match tomorrow in Great Falls if you want to drive up to uh, the McLaughlin Center. MSU Northern ranked 18th in the country, taking on Providence ranked 15th, Providence just had a great week down in Powell, Wyoming. Uh, four winners and a couple of seconds, some thirds, some fourths. Uh, there was one weight class, I can't remember but uh, which one it was, but three of the top four were from Providence. Took first, third, and fourth. So Providence women had a great showing down in Colorado, too, in Grand Junction. Um, good stuff. Wrestling season is upon us in college. It'll be here in about a month for high school. Looking forward to uh, to that as well. All right, like I said, let me take a break. We'll come back. When we return, we're going to check in with Kyle Mahelish. Capital Bruins facing the two-time defending state champs on Friday night at Vigilante. How's the field looking? And how do you shut down Sentinel? Even though they're not the Spartans from the last two years, it's still a, still a good football team, and they have experience in this type of game. So we'll talk to Kyle Mahelish coming up next when we return. Also, Clint Lang set to join us. This is the Jason Walker Show right here. Strength, beauty, grit, superior craftsmanship. Our homes have it all. At Montana Custom Log Homes, if you can dream it, we can build it. With three divisions and over 50 years experience, we've got you covered. From a showcase home to a small cabin, we make your vision a reality. Because every cowboy wants a castle for his queen. Montana Custom Log Homes, crafting homes that last for generations. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work, then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot. Or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces, stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com 
L&P Grocery offers Boulder a convenient shopping experience, whether you're stopping in for a few things or stocking up for the week ahead. From fresh produce and meat to all the staples you need to feed your family, you'll find it here. L&P Grocery is also proud to have partnerships with local brands and carry products unique to the area. Stop by to exchange propane tanks, pick up fishing tackle, grab your prescription, or get your photo taken at the pitcher kiosk. They're delighted to be the one-stop shop for local area Boulder residents who want to support local business. Visit lnpgrocery.com and at 215 North Main Street. Summer, the season to work hard, play hard. The days are heating up and getting longer. The smell of fresh cut grass, the hot sun on your skin. We kidding. We all know you're really thinking about having fun or relaxing at the Copper Club Casino. Meet your friends for a cold one. Play a fiver or two. When you want great service, cold drinks, and fun entertainment, this is the place. The Copper Club Casino, where everybody knows your name any time of year. On Euclid, across from Molundi Center, the Copper Club Casino. Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get a home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right Grab and Go Salad Bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients along with a daily soup and nacho bar too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinners Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm Agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. Welcome back, Jason Walker Show. On a Tuesday, we are back from YouTube suspension. Ooh. <laughs> uh, so, apologize to you. Apologize to the uh, fans, sponsors. Oh. Just don't can't tell the truth anymore, apparently. You've got your... Um, something coming up. <laughs> oh, Clint Lang is going to join us in a bit. Talk some Jefferson High football, Class B action. Jefferson and Florence Carlton this week. You also got semifinals in six man, eight man, A, and double A. And joining us now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline to talk about his team's matchup is the Capital Bruins head coach. His name is Kyle Mahelish, and he joins us. Uh, in a second here, as soon as I can load it up properly and get the little one off to bed here. And she just popped into the room. Hi, monkey. Hello. Oh, sweetie. It's okay. Let me get in. Let me, do you want to do the in- introduction like you did before? Okay, come here. Let's get you up here. Okay, hold on. We got to get down to the right thing. Okay, but I want you to say is joining us now. Okay, can you say it? Jason Here, you got to talk into the mic, honey. Jason On the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Um, what are you doing again? Mike Miller. Mike Miller. 
State Farm Hotline. State Farm Hotline. Is the Capital Head Coach. And the Capital Head Coach. Kyle. Kyle. Mahelish. Mahelish. Now, say, I have to go to bed. I have to go to bed. Have yourself a great night. Have you have have you have a good night. All right, Coach, always a pleasure to chat with you, and uh, I know I've missed a couple of weeks. I missed Crosstown. I missed uh, your first playoff win last week, but uh, how are you? We're doing good. Well, you should. Um, You're playing in late, you know, early November, and anytime you're playing at this point of the season is good. Anytime you get to this part of the season, you know you're having a pretty good season. Um, You know, the weather, obviously a little cold. Um, Kids have good spirits. Um, some of the other kids aren't too excited about it. Um, that's always expected. Right. Uh, we pulled up a lot of freshmen so they could experience the playoffs and, uh, I think that's good for our program when they can be around and, uh, be, be, be on the sidelines and be a part of team dinners and just enjoy the experience and see what it's like when the program's having success. And obviously then it's their job to carry it forward in the future. Yeah, for sure. And that future is uh, next year for a lot of those guys. Um, but let's talk about this year's team. Nice win over Butte in the quarterfinals. Did the week off help you guys? You know, I don't know. The bye week, you can never gauge anything. Uh, I mean, there's no end game to a bye week. I mean, you know, we, we had a practice on Friday, and we turned them loose, and we came back Monday ready to work. and We practiced every day. We had a film session on Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practice, special teams practice on Friday. We try to keep the routine the same. I just think sometimes in a bye week, you maybe lose some focus. And I'm not taking anything away from Butte because I know Butte came up and punched us right in the mouth and got after us. And we're happy that our kids responded. But I think, that, you know, we did have some bumps and bruises. Um, that helped. Uh, we're, we're full. We're healthy. We're good to go here for the semifinal game. Yeah, definitely. And, of course, when you have uh, a running game like you guys do, over 300 yards on the ground last week, that's going to that's gonna go a long way to, uh, to getting victories. We have, we, when we run the ball, obviously we have success. Um, and we, we've been able to do that consistently this year. Um, Butte certainly did a good job against us. Uh, we, we did have some blown assignments. We did uh, have some mental errors which was disappointing. Uh, those were addressed, obviously, this week, and we need to play better football in order for us to move on. Uh, but that running game, we know about Tom Carter. We know about, you know, Hayden Opitz and everybody else, but that front line, is this one of the best front lines you guys have had in a while? You know, we had a pretty good one a few uh, years ago, let's say, uh, quick on those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and Schneider at running back. But this is a very physical, active, athletic offensive line. I I mean, I know we're, you know, we're we're going anywhere from 6'6 to 6 feet. Um, But they're very good tacticians. Uh, They're they're very good with their feet. They're very good with their pad level. Very smart group. Uh, They're all, you know, they're all going to be probably academic all-state kids. Um, and you know, like I've always praised coach Hogan, uh, he, he does a fantastic job with those guys. Uh, they're very lucky to be coached by him. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, his pedigree alone is, is adds credence to what he says out there in practice. Yes. No, he's a, he's a man of, uh, he speaks the truth, uh, very honest person, uh, very hard. Uh, he, he coaches hard. Uh, everything about him, you know, he really builds relationships with those kids, and uh, they really enjoy playing for him. We're talking with Capital Football Coach Kyle Mahelis. You mentioned the size, and I, I go back to the Grizzlies during their run, and, and even a decade ago, you look at tall, big, tall offensive linemen. Why why is that a good thing? Well, those big, tall bodies, it's even if you're maybe very not a, maybe not a very good offensive lineman, you're you're just a big body, and it's it's hard when you're going against big bodies that, you know, whether it be pass rush or whether they start leaning on you in the run game, um, and if, you know, a big body's uh, aggressive and he can play well, I mean, it's very hard. And I know the formula for a lot of people in college is, you know, we want that 6'6", 6'7", 6'8", guy 
who can be 280, 290, 300 pounds. Um, you know, it's just, I mean, just think of that. If you're a defensive lineman and they have five of those guys, <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, that's a pretty daunting task. Well, look at North Dakota State and the success they've had over the last decade. I mean, it's not like they've got small guys up front. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, <laughs> you know, and, and it is. I mean, those kids need to be able to move. Uh, I mean, we do have some a few big kids. You know, Dawes is 6'5", Beeler is 6'6". Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, Marsha is 6'1", um, You know, Paul Musel is 6'1", um, and they're, and they're good sized kids. I mean, they're 240, 250. Uh, they're just big high school bodies. Yeah, definitely helps. Uh, big game this week. You are at home. Last time you played Sentinel was at their place, a big win for you guys, but now you got them at home. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but, uh, I know you're at home this week, but I don't remember if it was a road game in regular season, but, uh, we played them at home in the regular oh, season. Yeah, well, there you go. You get a week. You get six. them twice. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. forget what week it is. I don't even know what day of the week it is, let alone <laughs> what week number we are in football. But what do you expect different from Sentinel? Um, because they showed up in the playoffs, just like they have the last couple of years. And, you know, people say, well, they're not as strong possibly as they have been the last two years, but this is a team that, like you said earlier, you bring up those young kids, they get that experience, they know what it takes to win, and they definitely do at this time of the year. Oh, certainly. Um, you know, watching them against West and watching them against CMR and their two playoff games, they're, they're doing some things very similar to what they did against us. But Coach Oliver has kind of opened up the playbook and done some different things in certain formations as far as attacking different areas and uh, making, the, I guess, his offense a little more multiple. Uh, still, Adam Jones is the, the main guy. Mm-hmm. He's the guy that we're going to have to stop. Um, uh, the quarterback is obviously good and active. Uh, they have active. I mean, they're good on the perimeter. A uh, big uh, tight end there in Sermon, who's, you know, he and Michelotti look exactly the same in pads. I mean, so we're going to combat number three on number three probably and see how that goes. And But, uh, no, he, he spreads the ball around well. They have a good running game uh, with the J.J. Dolan kid. They're getting some Wildcat stuff. Also, with Adam Jones, they're getting some Wildcat stuff. So they're very multiple. The biggest thing we got to be able to do is uh, recognize things, get lined up, be able to rally to the ball. And, and do you rely on defense in this game or offense or is it just game flow? Well, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what the weather's going to be like um, and see how the old vigilante field is going to hold up oh. for us. So, you know, uh, that will dictate a little bit, but we still want to be aggressive on offense. We still want to be able to run the ball, take our shots and do those sorts of things and be who we are. Um, and, as, as the game progresses, if, if something's working more than other things, we'll stick with it and be rolling. Same thing defensively. I mean, yep. we got to be able to take away number six, who is Jones, and uh, they put him everywhere, so it's hard to do that. They move him around, they motion him, and then they have other weapons. Like I said, the Dolan kid and the Sermon kid and the quarterback's kid, and they're very good outside perimeter receivers. So it, it's going to be a tall order on Friday. Uh, by the way, the forecast is going to be below 25, I think. Uh, it should be sunny throughout the day, but that ground is probably going to be frozen. And uh, do you guys switch cleats for this game? Well, we do have some rubber cleats that we're messing around with this week, so we'll see. We'll bring those over. Um, you know, everybody's going to play on the same surface. Mm. Uh, when we played on Vig last week, I thought it would be a little more beat up after the Hell and High game, but it was it was in pretty good condition, so... I'm hoping that, uh, you know, just having one game on it, no game before us, that it'll be much better. Was that fun, playing two games on that, (laughs) being able to have two games on that game? Well, not for us. (laughs) (laughs) We're a little worried about the field. Um, And I know we we took the night game, and then Helen and I took the 330 and didn't take the noon game. Uh, I was kind of hoping they'd take the noon game, but that's the way it goes. Um. Kind of wish we wish would have done a Friday Saturday thing, but we had a double header there on Friday, so it worked out. Well, they had to take the three thirty game, so nobody misses school. Coach, you're a teacher. <laughs> this is all about student athletes, not athlete students. That's right. <laughs> By the way, today is I know you love this. 
Uh, today is National Parents as Teachers Day. Parents as Teachers yeah, Day? Yeah, so if parents uh-huh. fill in as teachers, uh, they were supposed to today. So what, oh, wow. what would your advice be to parents being a teacher? <laughs> Muckle up. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff that you can oh, the actually thing I say. Think, <laughs> the, biggest, the, the biggest thing I think that parents coming into the classroom would have a difficult time with is probably classroom management. Um, you know, people talk about that when they get out of college and they student teach and they do those sorts of things. I've, I've had many student teachers over the years, and that's kind of been the big struggle for, you know, to gain that relationship and gain that trust and be able to control, you know, anywhere from 24 to 30 students in your classroom. It's not as easy as some people think, but, you know, you see people going into classrooms and thinking that it's just just going to happen, and it, it doesn't. And how do you deal with, you know, maybe a kid that's mouthy, maybe you deal with, I mean, you're dealing with 30 different kids. So there's a lot of things that come up, and there's a lot of distractions, and and you're, you're playing, uh, I'm not saying you're playing uh, rap in there or anything, but it's uh, it's a, it's a full 50 minutes when you're in a classroom. So I think parents would struggle with uh, classroom management. Yeah, for sure. Is that why coaches make good teachers? Well, you know, I went to a, a clinic one time and uh, you know, that's something that Sonny Lubick said in a talk, the old famed Sonny Lubick from Butte and Miami and Colorado state, and Montana state all over the place. And I went to school with his son and um, that the, University of Montana Western, and he did say that. He said, uh, there's no difference between coaching and teaching. He said, teaching, good teachers would make good coaches, and good coaches would make good teachers because that's what you're doing. You're coaching those kids every day, whether you're in the classroom or whether you're on the field or in the locker room. Or That's one thing I always remembered what he, uh, he said. So, certainly. Would you um, – um... You coached against Tommy Malott. Were you? Did you get a chance to watch that last minute when he made that sweet play to talk? Yeah, about you know, it? actually, I won, yeah, <laughs> you know, I just kind of laughed too when it happened. And I went, well, at least it's happening to the big sky as well, you know. <laughs> it um, wasn't just Capital Bruins. Yeah, or everybody in the state of Montana. <laughs> right. So uh, yeah, I was uh, did some film work on Saturday, and I came home, did some laundry, and I was holding laundry actually in my room and. Um, I was watching the last part of that fourth quarter and it was third and 10 or whatever it was. And I said, well, you know, part of me says, if anybody can do it, it's going to be Tommy. And sure enough, he scrambles right and right on the sideline there, he throws it deep. And right when I saw Taco Dowler wide open, I just laughed to myself and shook my head and went, yep, there you go. Those are two guys, you know, intimately. <laughs> yeah. My question good is, for those guys. My question is, how does Taco Dowler get tracked down from behind? Well, you know, it's funny. We talked about that at our staff meeting before we kind of got it going on Sunday morning. And that's just lets you know what type of athlete is in the, in the big sky. Yeah. And, you know, obviously in high school, he's gone. There isn't anybody catching him. He's in the end zone. But then you look at, well, I don't remember if it was the safety of the corner that caught him that he got behind. But, like, well, that tells you that – Everybody's got Taco Dowler, and <laughs> and that's why the Big Sky is such a competitive conference. Yeah, would would Tom Carter have been tracked down in high school? No, in that game, if it was Tom instead of Taco. Well, I don't know. I guess <laughs> that remains to be seen. But we'll, we'll see. If that soon, guy, if sure. that guy can run down Taco Dowler, you know, odds are he can run down most people. <laughs> Man, what a great play, though! What a great play! Yes, it was. Uh, speaking of, have some good plays of yourselves on Friday night. Good luck against Sentinel, and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jason. That is Kyle Mahelis joining us on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. It's not just a bundle. It's your home. It's your auto. It's your life. Mike understands that. Get a hold of Mike Miller State Farm in Helena today. 7 o'clock kickoff at Vigilante. That'll be a good one. No doubt. Sentinel and Capital. The other is AA semifinal. Bozeman Hawks. Gallatin Raptors in Bozeman. That'll be a fun one, too. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. When we return, we're going to check in. Jefferson, Panthers coach Clint Lang will join us. This segment brought to you by... Whoa. Uh, This segment brought to you by um, Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. 
Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. L&P Grocery offers Boulder a convenient shopping experience. Whether you're stopping in for a few things or stocking up for the week ahead, from fresh produce and meat to all the staples you need to feed your family, you'll find it here. L&P Grocery is also proud to have partnerships with local brands and carry products unique to the area. Stop by to exchange propane tanks, pick up fishing tackle, grab your prescription, or get your photo taken at the pitcher kiosk. They're delighted to be the one-stop shop for local area Boulder residents who want to support local business. Visit lnpgrocery.com and at 215 North Main Street. Do you love to look at photos of Montana from animals to landscapes and more? Are you looking for a place to get your senior pictures or family portraits done? Are you a business owner looking to upgrade the decor in your offices? Well, look no further than Mark LaRoe Photography. Mark has been shooting beautiful photos all across the Treasure State from rodeos to portraits and would love to work with you. Visit MarkLaRoePhotography.com to see many masterpieces of his work, then give him a call to schedule your own photo shoot. Or to purchase one of his fantastic pieces, stop by Spirit of the Big Sky Gallery on Custer in Helena. MarkLaRoePhotography.com Fall is officially here, and now is the perfect time to get your rig tuned up before the big hunt. That means a lift kit from Auto Concepts. An Auto Concepts lift kit will help take you places only the animals can go. And when you do get that big one, make sure you have help to get a home with a winch to pull it out. Or maybe you'll be a good friend and help pull someone out of the snowbank. Check out AutoConceptsHelena.com for more ideas. Auto Concepts, the auto enhancement professionals. Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right Grab and Go Salad Bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients along with a daily soup and nacho bar too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinners Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm Agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Strength, beauty, grit, superior craftsmanship. Our homes have it all. At Montana Custom Log Homes, if you can dream it, we can build it. With three divisions and over 50 years experience, we've got you covered. From a showcase home to a small cabin, we make your vision a reality because every cowboy wants a castle for his queen. Montana Custom Log Homes, crafting homes that last for generations. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Summer, the season to work hard, play hard. The days are heating up and getting longer. The smell of fresh cut grass, the hot sun on your skin. <laughs> we kidding. We all know you're really thinking about having fun or relaxing at the Copper Club Casino. Meet your friends for a cold one. Play a fiver or two. When you want great service, cold drinks, and fun entertainment, this is the place. The Copper Club Casino, where everybody knows your name any time of year. On Euclid, across from Mobile Center, the Copper Club Casino. This 
is the Jason Walker Show. Welcome back, Jason Walker Show. This segment brought to you by the Copper Club Casino. Warm staff, hot games, cold drinks, stop in anytime right next to Cafe Zydeco on Euclid in Helena. Got some uh, big football across the state this week, and that includes in Class B, where the Jefferson Panthers, big win last week in Malta, now head on the road again, where they will take on the defending champs in a rematch of last year's state semi. Clint Lang joins us now here to talk about the game against Florence Carlton, the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline, and the Jason Walker Show. All right, Coach, it's... uh... It's playoff football. It's what you love. It's, it's, well, you just love football in general, but another big yeah. win for the Panthers over Malta. And I think I drove past your guys' bus Saturday coming back from Malta just about right around Gates of the Mountains. It was pretty late. At oh, night. really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We would have been rolling by there probably about nine o'clock, I'm guessing. Yeah, it was pretty close to that. Yeah, I think so. So big win for yep. you guys, though. The Oxarts just keep getting the job done. Yeah, it was a big game. You know, uh, those kids were excited to go back to Malta where they're from. And then their uncle's the head coach. And then they have two cousins that play on the team. And I thought we played really well. It was kind of a crazy game with the wind up there. I mean, I, it's, I don't know if it was as bad as when I coached in the quarterfinals in eight man one year in sunburst, but it was right up there. Just to give you an example, I chose to kick off both halves. Oh jeez! <laughs> well, yeah, which, like, which is to, rare. To tell you the, yeah, so like on the to tell you a little backstory to that, we're out there in uh, pregame, and and first off, my hat flies off my head. It starts, I mean, and it's just going down the track. It goes out the gate, past the ambulance, and then I pick, I chase it down. I'm on a dead sprint, finally catch it on the road, and as I'm picking it up. Uh, kids swimming pools rolling down the road like it's, someone's rolling a tire down the road. That's how that's how bad the wind was. So uh, I remember when I coached an eight man game in the state playoffs, and uh, and the other guy I coached with is like, "What do we do here?" And I go, "We take the wind in the first quarter and try to bury him." So I told the refs, I told the refs during my pre talk, I said, "Hey." If uh, we win the toss or they defer, we're going to choose to defend this goal and kick to the scoreboard. And the refs kind of looked at me, and they're, they're like, uh, you might kick both halves in. And I go, I, I'm fully aware of that, and I'm fine with it. <laughs> so, so, so we won the toss, and we chose to defend the goal. And uh, it, it, it was bad. I mean, they tried punting after their first drive, and it, the ball went sideways. Mm-hmm. From then on, in the third quarter, in the first quarter, they went for it on fourth and seven plus anywhere from their own 25 to their own 10 every time. Jeez. That's, uh, that's some wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was. And then, you know, the third quarter especially, we just we put it out of reach in the third quarter. To, to give you an example, they went for it on fourth, and I want to say 10-inch from their own 10 and they're and we ended up having a tackle for loss in the backfield got the quarterback and we started our drive on the one yard line going in Gee. well short fields are, are usually what wins in the playoffs <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that was to the extreme right there oh uh, you feel bad for malta being on its home home football field but everybody hey the wind was the same for everybody yep it was and i honestly didn't feel bad at all <laughs> so, um, yeah, but I have listeners in Malta, coach. I'm trying to, you know, play nice. Uh, we're yeah. talking with uh, Jefferson High football coach Clint Lang. Not only the Oxarts, but Dylan Root had a big night. Uh, Michael Emter, a fumble return for a touchdown. Um, Root with the three scores, a couple of field goals. Uh, so you did kick a little. Yeah, with, with the wind, uh, <laughs> my my assistant, uh, Jared Padmos, who, you know, punted for the Bobcats, yeah. he told me in pregame, if we're going that direction, I think if we anywhere from the 50 in, we can kick a field goal. Holy cow. Like, how, uh, how long were the field goals? Well, the field goals ended the day were like 38 and 36. But, you know, because we were never in that situation. But Jared told me before the game, he goes, hey, if we're 50 in – Go in that direction, we can kick a field goal. 
Believes in his uh, <laughs> he believes in his kicker. He knows legs. Yeah. So <laughs> so we had in the plans. Plus in high school football, it, if you if you kick a field goal as long as it makes it to the end zone, the ball only comes out to the twenty anyway. Right. Yeah. But yeah, so that that's, <laughs> that just gives you an idea of the wind right there. Oh man. Uh Take out the win, though, a good performance, especially on your defensive side, because, like I said, the win factored both, you know, both ways. It, 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 it impacted both teams, but your defense really stepped up again. Yeah, we played fast. We played physical. I mean, we were downhill the whole game. Our, front, our uh, defensive line and linebackers played exceptionally well. There wasn't a lot of passing in the game, obviously. Uh, we held Malta to 11 yards rushing. And they're a run-oriented team with a, you know, a thousand-yard back on the season. So our, I, I was really happy with our defense. Talking with uh, Clint Lang on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. He coaches the Jefferson High football team back into the semifinal, second straight season. Um, what is this? What does this semifinal appearance mean to you? It means a lot, you know, because these kids they really worked hard to get back to this point. And uh, it's been a fun group to coach and to, to get back here again this year, I think is a good accomplishment, but you know, we have bigger goals ahead of us and, and I think we can attain them to be honest with you. I know nobody wants to talk about what happened, but it's got to mean something special to you too with this group of kids. I mean, you, you wanted to coach this group. Yeah, I did. I mean, they're, they're a great group of kids and, and I knew we had talent coming back and they work hard. They're easy to coach and it's fun. And I love football, but more than that, I love, I love working with the kids and seeing them have success and succeed. So, I mean, it's, it's just, it's been a great year. I mean, we've, we've, uh, we've played probably the toughest schedule in class B to be honest with you. We had a, a, you know, a couple hiccups in the middle of the season where we didn't play as good as I felt we were. Uh, but we also had a key injury during that time and we challenged the kids to bounce back, to get back to the level that we thought we were and and they've done it. I think we're playing real good football right now. And, and I like where we're at. We know how good the offense has been, but that defense is going to be tested again this week. You go back out on the road, go into Florence Carlton. Uh, This is a team, you know, very, very well. It feels like Pat DeShane has been in class B football for, uh, I don't know, all 12 years, 13 years of high school. Yeah, I wish he would have been a senior last year, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, uh, it, you know, he, he's as good uh, – oh, actually, he's the best quarterback I've coached against since I've been in Class B. Mm. Uh, the only one I can even think of that would be up there that I coached against early in my career here was Quinn McQuarrie at Manhattan. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, he was really good, but I just think that this kid does so many things, with, not only with his throwing, but his running. I mean, he is, he's a big time run threat. And then there's a lot of times where you'll think, oh, we got him sacked. And then he's out of the, he's out of the trouble and he either scrambles and makes a big throw or, or he's taken off running. I, I mean, he's the real deal. And there's a reason why he's being recruited heavily by a lot of the co- a lot of colleges throughout the state and out of state, to be honest with you. We're talking with Clint Lang on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. How do you defend that? Who, you know, you, you have to get pressure. You got to get him to, you know, off his spot where he's, you know, make him a little uncomfortable. And, and then when you get a chance to sack him, you got you have to get him to the ground, which isn't always easy. And then you and 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 in the secondary, your guys have to they have to cover, they have to plaster. I mean, when he scrambles and stuff, you can't take your eyes off and be looking in the backfield because next thing you know, he's going to throw it over the top of your head for a touchdown. I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it, and it, it really takes a great effort on all three levels, your D line, your linebackers and your secondary. You face a really good defense and it's a defense with the Falcons, you know, really well, but how do you break through? We got we to be able to run the ball. I mean, that's, that's our forte is running the ball. And we did, a re, we've done a real good job of that this year. We ran the ball well against them. The last time we played them, we kind of got a two headed monster back there with Luke at quarterback and, and root root at running back. And we have Jace Oxart back now. And I think he's finally fully healthy where he can 
start playing offense again. You know, the first round of the playoffs, we limited him to just defense. And last week he played a little bit of offense, but I think he's full go now. And, and, and I think it starts up front with our line in the run game. And then, uh, and that'll set up our pass game to take some shots and, and do some different things in the play action game. How, what's the percentage of ox arts compared to the rest of the team? Oh, we, we have two ox arts, <laughs> you know, and then there was actually three ox arts on the field last week. And then another kid that's last name was an ox art, but he's related to all the ox arts. Jeez. It's one of those. It's just, I mean, the, the family comes around, you know, and you get those kids that it's like the, uh, uh, rousers at Townsend. There's just so many of them. Yeah. And yeah. Luke good. will be, the, yeah. Luke will be the last one. I mean, he's a sophomore and, we got we got two more years of him, thank goodness. And then there and then coming up, they'll have a daughter that is actually in the same grade as my youngest daughter. That's a good athlete too. Are you going to push your daughter to play Class B football, or is you okay with you know her playing for the wife? Oh, that's it's fine. That's <laughs> fine with me. It's a lot easier for me to sit back and relax and watch. <laughs> That was going to, you know, that's what I think I've talked to you about this before. It's got to be easy for you to not have to worry about that. Right. You just have to go out and just be dad. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and, and and it's nice to be able to do that. You know, uh, what's wrong with Pittsburgh? They, uh, they have the worst offensive coordinator in the history of football. Okay. What's wrong with and Matt team? Canada, Matt Canada, should have been gone last year. He needs to be gone this year. And it's, it's just holding the whole team back. And I don't know. I mean, obviously they got to get some better linemen and, and improve the roster. But I, I believe it's more in the, the coordinator situation on the offense, offensive side of the ball, to be honest with you. And I don't know. I, I'm starting to lose some faith in Tomlin, to be honest with you. <laughs> I think a lot of Steelers fans are, um, how do you see the that division shaking up? Because Deshaun Watson comes back in two weeks now. I think ah, the Browns they're not they're not going to be a factor. That 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 organization's a clown show. Still the Ravens. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think it's the Ravens. And then if Cincinnati gets healthy, they could be mm-hmm. tough. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I I haven't I've I haven't been focusing on it too much. As long <laughs> as the Panthers are winning, I'm good. And you know, I mean, I'll, I'll always back the Steelers. I just, I just hope they. They make some changes, and then it should be a good draft for us, hopefully. Uh, you're an Eastern Oregon Mountaineer. They're struggling the last yeah. few years. Uh, oh, could, yeah, I could, saw. Could you replace Tim Camp out there? Oh, I don't know about that. I think. <laughs> would would I you think, want to be a college coach? Uh, you know, I don't know if I would. I, I, I kind of like the high school level, and, you know, I think if you're a college coach, your free time goes to absolutely zero. Mm-hmm. And it would be hard to, you know, follow your kids. I mean, fortunately for me, I, I, I miss a few volleyball games here and there. But other than that, I don't miss much of my kids' stuff. And I think college coaches, you would miss a lot more. And then plus, I, I like to hunt, too. And my hunting's already limited. I couldn't imagine how limited it'd be if you're, a, if you're a college coach. So, I don't know. I mean, I guess for the right price, it would maybe. <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right. I know you're focused on Florence Carlton, but before I let you go, how do you see that Loyola Big Fork game? The Big Fork. I mean, I, I think easy. it's, yeah, I think, I mean, I, you know, obviously Loyola's improved and they're playing a lot better, but, but I think it'd be a huge upset if, uh, if Big Fork didn't, didn't win that game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I, oh, I just, sure. I mean, Big Fork already won big against them once. Uh, they're playing at home. Uh, they just got a lot of things going for them. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So that's how I see it. You know, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not real concerned about it. I mean, because I think, uh, I mean, we got a tough enough opponent in front of us, and I think either us or Florence, no matter who wins, is going to have a great shot. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So I'm just worried about this game right now. And, uh, and uh, I think Big Fork, I think Big Fork will win. I think, you know, not to discredit anything Loyola's done, but if the Townsend Bulldogs stay healthy, I think that that would probably be the matchup we're seeing this week on the, 
other side of the bracket. That would have been a good one too. It would have been cool to see yeah. Jefferson Townsend championship. Yeah, I told that to Coach Rao that, uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, right before the playoffs started, you know, I said that'd be awesome. But <laughs> yeah, they they had some tough breaks down the stretch, which I hated to see. Yeah, for sure, especially being uh, right in our area here. Um, win or lose, will you be hunting on Sunday? No, I won't be hunting no matter what. Okay. Again. On 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 Sunday because my youngest daughter has a hoop shoot at oh, Carroll okay. Sunday morning. Okay. <laughs> so you'll be in Helena watching that, and then yeah, I'll home. be at the hoop. Yep, I'll be in Helena watching my youngest daughter shooting the hoop shoot. Nice. And hopefully, I'm uh, getting ready to watch film on whoever wins that other game. I hope. Well, you're gonna watch film no matter what. I know you. Yeah, <laughs> but but hopefully I'm watching film in a good mood, though. There, there you go, because just leave that Pittsburgh game off. Yeah, I, well, I'm going to have to DVR that thing because of the hoop shoot. So, oh. I'll, yeah, so which I'll me, do. You don't want me to text you updates? Nope. I, whenever I have to do that, I, I don't. When I watch it, I, I watch it without knowing the score. Uh, I love it. Hey, uh, good luck this weekend. Safe travels, and uh, it's it's always fun to talk with you, and I hope we're talking next week. Okay, sounds good. I appreciate it. That is uh, Jefferson High Coach Clint Lang on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. Not just a bundle. It's your home, it's your auto, it's your life. Mike understands that. Get a hold of Mike Miller State Farm in Helena today. So, you know, here's the nice thing about doing this show at night is watching all these election results come in. And uh, nothing for Montana yet, but but paying attention. All right, let's do uh, On This Day in History. It is... Is that right? Yep. Uh, it is uh, November the 8th. It is National Harvey Wallbanger Day. It is Cappuccino Day and Parents as Teachers Day. Uh, in this date, 1966, Frank Robinson, Baltimore Orioles outfielder, selected as the AL MVP, first player to win the MVP in both leagues. 1970, Tom Dempsey of the New Orleans Saints kicks a then NFL record 63 yarder field goal. Uh, 19, uh, 2017, Brazilian surfer Rodrigo Coxa breaks the world record for surfing, the biggest ever wave at 24.4 meters at Nazare, Portugal. Uh, 24.4 meters is equal to 80.05 feet and some change. Uh, 1929, great football coach Bobby Bowden was born, uh, coached Florida State from 1976 to 2009, won a couple of championships in 93 and 99, passed away uh, last year. 1966, British chef and reality TV personality, Gordon Ramsay, born in Johnston, Scotland. Uh, 1975, happy birthday. Tara Reid, great American actress. Alex Trebek passed away on this date one year ago at the age of 80 of pancre- uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, let's see here. What else? Uh, 19, or 1789. Bourbon whiskey was first distilled from corn by Elijah Craig in Bourbon, Kentucky. On this date in 1889, does everybody know? Montana was admitted as the 41st state. So happy birthday to the great state of Montana. What is that, 132 years ago? 2016, Donald Trump elected 45th president of the United States. Uh, Let's see, Vlad the Impaler was born on this date in 1431. Many attribute Vlad the Impaler to Dracula. Now, I bring that up because on this date in 1847, some 416 years later, the man who wrote Dracula, Bram Stoker, was born. Great author. Another one, Margaret Mitchell, born on this date in 1900, uh, wrote Gone with the Wind. And Doc Holliday died on this date in 1887. In Colorado. Steamboat Springs, is that right? I think that's right. Uh, That's a little bit of what happened on this date. November the 8th. 
Let's do this. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. The walk-off presented by Cafe Zydeco, where the Big Easy meets the Big Sky. Make sure you stop in for the best cage in this side of New Orleans. I was there a couple of weeks ago, had the uh, pasta Zydeco. Big fan. I talked about the po' boys a lot. Beignet, my daughter loves beignets. You can stop in and get any great Cajun food by stopping in to Cafe Zydeco. Uh, let's see here. Good to be back. And uh, if you missed anything from the show, you can go back to jasonwalkershow.com. We uh, are allowed to upload again to YouTube after a little two-week suspension or so for violating terms and conditions of misinformation, allegedly, from 2020, something back in August of 2020. We appealed, they denied, we're going to find a new partner to work with. So that's why we were gone. But we are back. Later this week, Alex Eshelman will join us. Thanks to Clint Lang, Jefferson High football coach, big game at Florence Carlton uh, this weekend. Thanks to Kyle Mahelish for joining us as well, Capital High football coach. Hope you've had a fun couple of weeks. We're back and stronger. And still, to borrow a phrase, unafraid. We'll do it again. Go to jasonwalkershow.com anytime for anything you may have missed. Thanks to all of our great sponsors, all of our great viewers and listeners. Couldn't do it without you. We appreciate you right here at Jason Walker Show. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.